Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to crochet a necktie. For today's project, you're going to need a crochet hook. I'm using an itty bitty two millimeter hook today. You're also gonna need some scissors, as well as some yarn. I'm using this fine crochet thread, probably about a number one. It's a lace weight, it's the Aunt Lydia kind. You can get it at Walmart or Michaels or wherever. You're also going to need either a measuring tape or a necktie. I've got one of Alex's neckties here, and we're gonna be using this as our pattern to follow for our crochet project. So we're going to begin by crocheting a long strap. We're going to basically find the spot on the necktie where the decreases start or where the decreases finish. You can see the wide end of the tie. There's a point at which the decreases stop getting smaller, right around here. And then we're going to follow along the necktie until the decreases begin, which goes to about here. So this whole section is all about the same width. This part of the tie ends up being between 30 and 32 inches. At that point, the tie starts to get wider. So gather your supplies and let's jump into it. We're going to start with a long tail because we're going to be doing some decreases at the end of the project. So I'm going to create a little ball of yarn at the end of the project that will just be there so we don't have to attach yarn after the fact to create the little pointed end of the necktie. And then I'll just yarn around just to secure it together while we're working. Now with my tiny little crochet hook I'm going to create a slip knot. Now we're going to chain 11 stitches. One, two, three, ten, eleven. Now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. One and two. From here, we're going to single crochet across that initial chain. At the end of this row, you should have 10 stitches in the row, because that chain that we skipped at the beginning ends up being one single crochet, so our chain of 11 ends up being 10 single crochets in the row. At the end of the row, I'm going to chain one and turn the work. So our first row is just about an inch and a half wide. Now we're going to continue for 30 inches worth of strap, basically. I'm gonna zoom through this because this part is just single crochets and though it is a little bit finicky because of this tiny hook and tiny thread, it's going to make a really cute look in the end. So it's gonna be worth it. This is a great project for while you're doing something else. If you're watching a movie or if you're in a conversation conversation, something like that, because there's a lot of just back and forth with single crochet for this one. At the end of each row, chain one and then turn the work around. So like I said, I'm going to zoom through this part and I will see you when I get to the end of my 30 inches. All right, I am coming up on the end of row number 240. So for me to get those 30 inches of length on this strap, I needed to do 240 rows. I'm gonna just pull a loop up here so I can show you this lovely band, 240 rows of it. And now I want to actually go to the other side of the necktie, our beginning side where we started from. I'm going to untie the knot that I put in there and I'm going to pick up my stitches on this side now. All right, so this side here is going to be the skinny end side of our tie. If you can see, the tie kind of flares out just a little before tapering off. This section's just a little bit wider than the middle part of the tie. It flares out just a little bit. So before we start doing the decreases, we're going to do a row or two of increases. So I'm gonna put my hook right where the tail of the yarn is coming out from and then I'm gonna yarn over the hook and I'm gonna pull up a loop with the tail just like that and then I'm actually going to create that right there is gonna be my first single crochet so I'm gonna chain one there and that's gonna be a single crochet in the first stitch of the bottom of the t of the tie then I'm gonna put a second stitch in the same spot to create an increase here. So now there's two single crochets in the first stitch of that row. And now I'm gonna single crochet across the row, one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. And when I make it to the last stitch of the row, I'm gonna put two single crochets in that last stitch. All right, here I am at the last stitch. 
So I'm gonna put two single crochets in that last stitch and then I'll chain one and turn the work. So we're gonna start the count again at this point. So that row we just did will be row number one of the tail end of the tie. So now for row number two, we're going to just single crochet one time in each stitch across. At the end of this row, you should have 12 stitches in the row. We started with 10, but we added two, one at the beginning and one at the end, which should put us to 12 stitches. And then I'll chain one and turn. And for this next row, row number three, I'm just going to single crochet across again. So still just 12 stitches in the row. At the end of the row, I'm gonna chain one and turn. Now, for row number four, we're gonna do the reverse. So we're going to do a single crochet two together for the first stitch. I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop, insert my hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Now there's three loops on the hook. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull through all three. Then I'm gonna single crochet until the end of the row, but I'm gonna wait with two stitches left in the row. All right, so now I've got two stitches here left in the row. So I'm gonna insert the hook and pull up a loop, insert the hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then I'll chain one and turn. And that was row number four. Now for row number five, we're just going to single crochet across. One single crochet in each stitch across. Then I'll chain one and turn. Now for row number six, we're going to do another decrease row. So we're gonna insert the hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop, insert into the second stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then we'll single crochet to the end of the row, stopping when there's two stitches left in the row. And now that I'm at the end of the row, for the final two stitches, I'll start by inserting the hook, pulling up a loop, inserting the hook into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops, and then chain one and turn. Now you can see that decrease starting for the edge of our tie. For row number seven, we're just going to single crochet across. For row number eight, we're gonna do another row of decreases. So the first two stitches and the last two stitches of the row, we'll do single crochet two together. Otherwise, single crochet across. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. For row number nine, just do single crochet all the way across. Now for row number 10, we're gonna do another row of decreases. So for the first two stitches and the last two stitches of the row, single crochet two together. Otherwise, just single crochet across. And now for row number 11, we'll just single crochet across. Now for row number 12, there are only four stitches left in the row. So we're going to single crochet two together for the first two stitches. And then we're gonna single crochet two together for the last two stitches. And that's gonna make up the entire row. For row number 13, we're going to single crochet two together. There's only two stitches left in the row at this point. So we're just single crocheting the two stitches left down into one stitch. And then I'm going to yarn over, pulling that loop through, pulling it nice and tight, and we're gonna weave that end in. We finished the tail end of the tie. It's like a sneaky little snake. Anywho, we're gonna go back to the other side of the tie now where we're going to start doing some increases for the wide end of the tie, the front part. So at this point, we'll be starting row 241, but I don't want to count from 200 anymore. So I'm gonna restart my count at the 241 mark. We're gonna just start it like it's row number one again, so it's easier to keep track of. I'm putting a stitch marker there just so that I know. Now, for this first row, I'm gonna start by doing two single crochets in the first stitch. Then I'm gonna single crochet across, but in the last stitch of the row, I'm also going to do two single crochet stitches. All right, here I am coming up to the end of row number two. I'll finish with a single crochet it'll be a little snug because it was two single crochets into that first stitch so i'll fin finish with a single crochet in that last stitch chain one and turn so now we've got one row with the increases and now one row just straight single crochet we're going to do an additional nine rows of single crochet so row one 
was increases. Now row two, all the way up to row number 11 is going to just be straight across single crochets. We don't want this to increase too rapidly. We want it to be a really nice smooth transition. So we're gonna have nine more rows of single crochet. I'm gonna zoom through this part and I will meet you at the end of row number 11. Here I am coming up to the end of row number 11 gonna finish with a single crochet in that last stitch, chain one and turn. And now for row number 12, I'm gonna put two single crochets in the first stitch and two single crochets in the last stitch. Otherwise, I will single crochet across. And then for rows number 13 all the way to row number 22, I'm going to just single crochet across. So at this point, we're doing increase and then 10 rows of single crochet. I'll meet you at the end of row number 22 to show you what it's looking like at that point. All right, I'm coming up to the end here of row number 22. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And now for row number 23, I'm gonna go ahead and do an increase row. So I'm gonna put two single crochets in the first stitch, two single crochets in the last stitch. Otherwise, I'm gonna single crochet across. Now for row number 24, all the way up to row number 33, I'm going to single crochet across. So again, we're doing an increase row and then 10 rows of single crochet. So I'll see you at the end of row number 33. I'm just gonna zoom through this because it's the exact same process that we did for the last two increases. All right, I'm coming up to the end of row number 44 now. I'm gonna do my last single crochet, chain one and turn. Now for row number 45, I'm gonna do an increase row. So I'm gonna do two single crochets in the first stitch, two single crochets in the last stitch, otherwise single crochet across. Then from row number 46, all the way up to 66, I'm gonna do 20 rows, just single crochet. So up to this point, we've done 10 rows of single crochet between each increase. This next step, we're gonna do 20 rows of single crochet between the increase. So we've got this increase stitch here on row number 45. We're gonna do 46 to 56 to 66, all with just single crochets. So I'm gonna zoom through this part because it is exactly the same thing. I'm just doing 20 rows with no increases and I'll see you at the end of row number 66. All right, I'm coming up at the end of that 20th row. And then for row 67, I'm gonna do an increase row. So that means I'm gonna do two single crochets in the first stitch, single crochet across, and then two single crochets in the last stitch. Also peekaboo and Mercury and Beelzebub have decided to join me uh, for this row. Here's Miss Beelzebub. You just sit over there, good girl, peekaboo. Oh, don't break my measuring tape. Anyway, I'm gonna zoom through the next few rows. I'm gonna do this increase row for row number 67, and then for rows number 68 all the way to 78, I'm going to just single crochet across. I'm gonna do row number 79 as an increase, and then row 80 up to row 90, I'll do single crochets. Sir, excuse you. This is my measuring tape. Literally, I live in a zoo right now. There are birds everywhere. There's a dog at my feet, a cat on my table, baby chickens underneath the table, and two parrots playing with my yarn. What am I doing? All right, so I'm gonna zoom through this part and I'll see you in a little while. Hey, by the way, if you're liking the video so far, don't forget to click the like button. It really does help the channel grow and I'd really appreciate if you could take a second and click that like button. It only takes a second, but it really does make a difference. Thank you. All right, I've been going for quite some time now. I'm now at row 100. So we did row one increase and then 10 rows and then another row of increase, 10 rows, another row of increase, 10 rows, another row of increase, 10 rows, another row of increase, then 20 rows, 
another row of increase, then 20 rows, and then now I've gone another just about 10 more rows after that. So I'm going to finish my set of 20 rows here, and you can see the increases. They're not quite as smooth as I would love for them to be. When you do one increase uh, and then a straight row and then an increase and then a straight row one after the other, the taper is much cleaner, but it's all right. We'll clean this up by adding a single crochet row around the outside after we finish the necktie. But you can see we've got the increase coming along well now. We've got the necktie fitting on really well, and you can see where this is about how much left we've got to go. So I'm gonna finish my 20 rows increasing here, and that should bring us to about this point. So I'm gonna finish that, and then I'm gonna come back and show you. I don't know where I left off, that's why I'm updating you now. So see you when I finish this last set of 20. Okay, friends, it's been a couple of days now, and I'm coming back to this project. I ironed it on my iron just so it would be flat and there's no more curling. I've counted out my rows so I can tell you how many rows total I've got. So I've done every 100 rows. So 100, 200, 300, 400 rows, and two, four, six. 406 rows to get to the point that I'm at now. And I'm now at the point on this necktie where I'm going to start my decreases for the end of the necktie. So we are now at the widest point and it's time to taper it in back down to a nice point. After I finish with that, I am going to measure it out for you. But at this point, I can put it up with this existing tie just to show you that it is about the length of a regular tie. I've made mine a little bit thinner. That's possibly because when I ironed it, I pulled it nice and tight at the same time. And when I ironed it out, you can see the increases have softened. It looked a lot more uh, like a stair step. Now it's tapering really nice, which is great. And now you can see we are right at the correct length. Length. So we are gonna do some finishing stitches around the outside, but let's get to the point where we are doing our decreases. I've got two stitches left in this row now. So I'm just going to finish those off. Again, row 106, sorry, row 406 complete. Now I'm going to chain one and turn. And for row number 407, I'm going to begin with a decrease stitch. So that means I'm going to single crochet two together. And to do that, I'm going to insert the hook, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and then pull through all three loops on the hook. Now I'm going to single crochet across until there's two stitches left in the row. And here I am at the end of the row. I've got two stitches left in the row. For the last two stitches, I'm going to single crochet two together. Yarn over, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the last stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Then I'm gonna chain one and turn. Now for row 408, I'm just going to single crochet across. No decreases for this row. I'm at the end of row number 408. I'm just gonna do my last single crochet, and then I'm gonna chain one and turn. Now for row number 409, we're gonna be doing another row with decreases at the beginning and end of the row. So I'll start by inserting my hook, yarning over and pulling up a loop, inserting my hook into the second stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop, and then yarning over and pulling through all three loops on the hook. Then I'm gonna single crochet across the row until there's only two stitches left in the row. For those last two stitches, I'm going to single crochet two together. Here I am at the end of the row, I'm just gonna do my last two stitches here as a decrease stitch, and then I'll chain one and turn. For row number 410, I'm just going to single crochet across. Now I'm going to continue with this two row repeat until I only have two stitches left in my row. So just keep decreasing until you reach just about the end of your triangle. If you made your tie a little bit wider than me, it might take a few more rows. If you left yours a little bit more narrow than me, it might not take as many rows. I'll tell you how many it takes for me when I get there, but I am just going to keep doing one row with decreases at the beginning and end of the row, followed by one row, just single crochet across. And I'll see you when I get to that point. Here we are at row number 430. We've got our decreases and there are two stitches left in my row. I am going to do one more single crochet two together, 
just to bring those to a nice point. There we go, now we've got a nice point. And the shape of the tie is actually finished at this point. We've got decreasing down to zero on the front end and the back end of the tie. And then we've got our wide narrowing down to our nice narrow back section of the tie. And now what I wanna do is some finishing work to sort of straighten up the edges and clean it up just a little bit. So I'm going to keep my yarn attached here and we're just going to change direction. So from here, I am going to begin working single crochets down the side of the tie. I'm gonna start with a single crochet in the first row. We're doing the first stitch of each row. So there's my first one and we'll put another one in the first stitch of the second row, first stitch of the third row, and so on. We're going to just repeat that all the way up the side, one stitch per row. Since we did single crochets, one stitch per row is going to keep a nice even line around our necktie. Oh my goodness almost done here just coming up to the last few rows and here i am at the end of the necktie so i'm going to put my last single crochet in and then i'm going to join right here and i'm going to join with a single crochet instead of with a slip stitch and that's going to leave a nice point at the end of our necktie and now i'm going to pull through i'm going to cut my yarn we're going to weave in that end before we finish everything we need to create that little part on the back for the front of the tie to tuck into or for the back of the tie you know like on a tie there's the this, this little piece so that once you put the tie together this piece tucks in and then the tie lays flat we need to add one of those on this one so I think we'll do a little crocheted one and I think we're gonna stitch it down I'm not going to crochet it on so I'm gonna create a chain stitch oh hello I'm gonna create a chain stitch with the two millimeter hook and I'm gonna do a nice tight chain because this is going to be our little tuck area. So I'm not gonna be doing any single crochets here, just a single chain. And I'm just gonna chain, let's see, four, five, 19, 20. Let's do 20, I think that's good. So we'll just have that chain of 20. I'm gonna give a nice long tail. I'm gonna pull through to create this little chain. And now let me get my sewing needle to stitch this on. So I'm gonna stitch it right around here. I'm just doing that based on where it is on the original necktie, right around here. So I'll be stitching mine on right around here. I've got a little sewing needle because I want it to be a little subtle. I don't, I don't want it to be stitched on with a yarn needle making gaps. So I'll just line it up on the tie just like that. And then I'm just gonna be pulling strands of yarn from one side of the work. I don't want this to show up on the other side. So I'm just gonna do one loop at a time and I'm just gonna sort of stitch this down. So I'm gonna stick it back into our original chain. I'll stitch that down and then I'll go back through our original chain again. There we go. So just a couple of stitches here to tack it down and then I'm going to take the tail and I'm gonna weave that tail into the original chain. So it just will dissolve right into the work and then there won't be any tail, or at least there won't be any visible tail. It'll be woven in. All right, there we go. And then I'll just trim my tail right here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna tack down the side of the chain to this side of the work. Sorry, if you hear demonic chitter chatter in the background, that's just the birds talking into a vase. They love the sound of their own voices in the vase. All right, and now that that side's tacked down, I'm just going to weave it back through the chain the same way I did with the first one. And there we go. Now I can trim my end. And now we've got that little tuck area to put the tie into once it's on so that the tail doesn't flap away, just like that. I'm going to block this. Oh, I forgot to weave in this end. One second. It's finished. Da 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 da. The beautiful, simple, 
crocheted necktie. I think this came out amazing. What do you think? So I've tied it in a preliminary tie style. So that means I remember how to tie a tie, which is pretty cool. Or at least I think I do. Here, I'll do it again and you tell me if I did it right, okay? Put them around the neck, but with the long, the wide side longer than the short side. And then we cross the wide side over, wrap it around the short side, wrap it around a second time around the short side, and then we come up with the wide side up through the neck like that, and then we tuck the wide side into that front little piece we made and just pull it down. It's a lot easier on a model than it is flat. Pull that down nice and tight, or try to at least. Ta-da! Perfect tie. And then on the back, we've got that little place for the back to tuck into. Check it out on Alex. What do you think? I think this one turned out great. I think this would make a great Father's Day gift. If you're doing a handmade wedding, you could have your groom in this one or you could do it for the groomsmen. It's super simple, but it has a little bit of whimsy. You could add some embroidery on here or even back it with fabric if you want. But I like how lightweight and whimsical it is just being the single crochet rose. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you liked this video, if you liked the tutorial, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. It really does help the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's supporting me on the channel. If you'd like to support, check out the links in the description down below. There's lots of ways in there, lots of different links. Anyways, guys, that is all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye!